If you're not designing with auto layout in 2023, you're wasting precious time. In this video, we're gonna cover everything you need to know about auto layout in Figma so that you can design websites in record time. Let's get into it. So for those of you who don't actually know what auto layout actually is, take a look at the website that's right in front of us here. How would we build this exact thing using CSS and HTML? We'd probably use a flex box and then we probably have to align it vertically and horizontally somehow. And then we're gonna need to adjust the spacing here. Well, that's great, but how would we actually go and do this before we get the building done, right? When we're designing, how would we accomplish this? That is the point of auto layout. That's what auto layout is trying to achieve, if I can explain it in one, two sentences. It's trying to mimic what CSS and HTML can accomplish with real life websites, but in the step before so that you can understand more about the correct spacings, the correct positioning, everything you need to know to build the website in the correct conditions. So what I've done here is I've taken a screenshot of the website that we were just on, this website right here, and we're going to do a mock translation of of this site, this design into auto layout so that you guys can see just how easy auto layout can be. It doesn't need to be a scary thing to get into it. So let's go ahead and break this down. So I've taken the liberty of creating a few designs here. So these designs are trying to showcase how we're going to try to build this using auto layout. And to get started, we're first gonna need to put in a frame. So we're just gonna use the desktop one, 1440. And this should be pretty standard. This should be the one that you're using anyways. So to get started with the top design, let's just do that first. We can go ahead and click shift a and that's going to need to be in your head a lot in this video because shift a is the shortcut for auto layout in figma and we're going to be able to add in some padding here on the left and right side and we can just do this using shift so that it's nice and even and we'll do 144 for now we can do that so now anything that we add inside here will have that spacing on the left and right side that's called padding and then we can add some padding on the top and the bottom here but we're just going to add in zero for now and we're going to point this direction to be down. So anything that we add now, we can automatically stack it on top of one another. So I'm just gonna undo all of that and let's get into the first design here. So to break this down, we've got a few different things here. Let me just clip this so we can only focus on one design for now. So let's see. We've got an image on the left and then on the right side, we've got the actual content. So even now, just to get started, we can go ahead and just do that. We can create a new frame. I'm gonna just hold my shift key and we're gonna go back to the frame and we're gonna make it a fixed width of 1440 so that we always stick with that exact size. So we have this frame here. We've got 1440 for the overall desktop. Let's go ahead and we can actually just bring this image in here. Let me just crop the actual image so we can see what we're doing. I'm just gonna paste it inside of the frame. So now we've got the image inside of the frame. But let's focus on the text, which is, I would argue, the, the hardest part, the most challenging part of this build. So we can go ahead and create a text block here, just typing in no more restriction. I'm just gonna mimic what the text says here, and we can give it a appropriate size around 48 pixels, okay? So now that we have the top text here, all that we need to do from here now is add in text, and then we're gonna use auto layout to format that text so that it fits within the correct layout. So I'm just gonna add a body text here, and we can see that we start to see some problems already, even if we point this down. So we can go ahead and start our auto layout formation here. So let's go ahead and move this to the right side. So we have text on the left or text on the right side and the image on the left. And then we can maybe make this 16 pixels. And now we can start to use the auto layout function. So let's go ahead and press shift A and that'll create a new frame, a new auto layout. And we can then point this down and we'll see that we've got spacing here as well. So on the right side here, we've got your auto layout canvas. Almost this is where you're going to control everything that has to do with auto layout. You've got the direction that you want your auto layout to be going, whether it's to the bottom or to the right, vertical or horizontal. Then you've got your spacing here, and then you have padding on the left side and padding on the top and bottom side. And then on the right side here, we've got alignment, and we're just gonna get into that in a little bit, which is important, but for now, we don't necessarily need to do that. And then we've got the advanced layouts here, which also we do not need for now. So let's just focus on what we've got going on at the minute. So we've got text up and down, and then we've got these three boxes. Now, how would I create these three boxes to be exact the same every single time without auto layout. It would be a huge pain, that's how. So I'm gonna create a quick icon here just as an example, and I'm gonna paste it into the auto layout that we already have created here. And I'm gonna duplicate this text and put it to the bottom. And then we can go ahead and create another text. And I am just going to add some lorem ipsum here. Okay, and we can reformat this to be around that big. So now let's go ahead and make this bold. Okay, and now what we can do to format this text to be similar looking to this is we can go ahead and click on the elements that we want 
want to, I'm just holding shift and we're gonna press shift A and that is going to transform it into an auto layout. So again, we've got a few things to, to consider here. We've got eight spacing on everything. We've got eight spacing on this exact frame. And then within that, everything is pointing down. So the direction of both of these auto layout frames are pointing down. So what we can do now is we can just duplicate these three, select those two and create a new auto layout frame and point it to the right side. And what we can do now that we have these three frames is we can start to play around with the hug and the fill resizing. So we can go ahead and go onto the right side here and click on fill. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna set the overall container to be fixed so that the content itself can be filling the container just like that, okay? So let's go ahead and make the top two text here into an auto layout as well. And we can maybe do 16 pixels. And for this content, we can maybe use 16 as well, or maybe even 32. And overall for this entire auto layout, we can use maybe 48, something like that. So now that we see that we're getting pretty close to this already, and we can finally use our alignment here to figure out how we want to separate these two objects. So right now we have the top left alignment, and we see that if we go on to the top Top right we'll see how the text and the images everything is going to move around so i think for now we can choose the middle one and we notice that we need more spacing here so to do that we can either use this handle right here or we can just type in the standard which would be something around 80 or 60 something along the lines of that and just for simplicity's sake i'm going to take the color of this background so we can start to see what it should look like in this case and we can just take these colors Okay, and let's create this last button here so we can see what that would look like using another frame. And we see that that was pasted outside of the auto layout. So we wanna paste it inside, go ahead with that. We're gonna type in button. So now we've got a pretty similar layout to the actual real life scenario that we just copied it from. But what would we do if we wanted to copy the rest of these? Would we have to create all of this layout again? Probably not, it'd be easier just to duplicate this. We can click Command D, we can duplicate that paste it on the bottom just like this and these two sections we can then use auto layout to get them close to each other so then we can simply just move this around like this and have more control over our content now this is a bigger paragraph so maybe i can just take this one right here and we can move this down so it looks a little bit closer and we can see that there's more spacing between the button and the big text here so let's go ahead and change that so it's as easy as just typing in the number that you want to see here and it is quite literally that easy to use auto layout all you have to do is type type in numbers and the design will change itself. So that's the beauty of it. We can then take this image right here, place that just like that, and we can change the color of everything here. So for this button, we can then use the green, change this to white, change this to white, and there we go. So we're getting closer. And if we wanted to add another one, go ahead and do the same thing, change the direction of that. We to change this image here, align it to the top, just so we can see the image that we wanna work with, delete these two, and we can then add some padding on the top here. And so we see that very quickly, we can start to paint this picture of the entire website that we wanna see just using auto layout. So everything I've been doing here has been done in a few minutes. So we can see that we have the entire section built up in around 10 minutes here, or a little bit less. I'm not sure what, what the exact time was, but what we can see using auto layout, only using the canvas here, only using the alignment up, down, left, and right. We can see that we can really get a lot of control of what our design should look like. And if we take a look at the frames themselves, yes, they're not necessarily correctly named in this case, but we can simply change that using the basics here. So if we select the frame here, we can change this to content rename all of these to content as well. Maybe these three can be column, dollar sign, and N. So we can see number one, two, and three. This one can just be button. So we can quickly start to rename the auto layout and the frames that we've created. Now you should be doing this as you design along, but for this tutorial, it makes sense that we just speed through it. One last thing that we should cover in this tutorial is obviously the, gonna be the top padding here. We only cover that in the last section here, but if we want to add padding to all of these, it's very simple. You just add in just like that. And we quickly start to paint the picture of what this should be looking like. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this looks pretty, pretty similar compared to our section on the left side here. We can even change this to be semi-bold or bold. That pretty much covers it for this video. The last thing that I do wanna cover is gonna be an absolute positioning. So absolute positioning was introduced only recently into Figma and what it allows you to do is to put an element anywhere in a specific frame when you are using auto layout. So in this case, we want to simply use the frame itself or we wanna change this image to be closer to the left and right side because as we can see, the image does not float in space just like this. So what we can do is we can press on the absolute 
positioning button right here and it'll do the following. So it'll take it out of the equation completely. It will still respect the clipping of the parent elements, but the positioning itself is now completely irrelevant. So what we can do in this case is we can add more padding on both sides here on the top and the bottom, and we can position this to be where we want it to be. Something like that. We can reduce this a little bit. Always using shift. So we're using the eight multiples and we can see that we're, we're pretty much there, right? So if you guys learned anything in this video, if you guys have any more doubts about auto layout, then do let me know down below in the comments right under the like button. But I do think that this tutorial, if you guys follow it, it should be pretty comprehensive. It's pretty much everything you need to know about auto layout. It's just directioning, positioning, and mimicking what real CSS and HTML would be doing. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.